When I first came to Hart, there was a lot of really poor student behavior, and then of course some poor adult interactions with students. And so had to change the mindset of we can't just suspend everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> we have been um, working together for a while, um, but what makes the Hart family so unique is that you know you have invited with open arms restorative practices into um, into your space, right? So what are we gonna do that's different where we're changing student and adult behavior? And I just wanna put a quick shout out to Mrs. Strickland, uh -huh. who has been the principal since we opened our doors. Let's give her a quick hand. Uh -huh. And so the district came in and taught us restorative practices. And just from a mindset of using the questioning protocol and de-escalating students. Come on, Mrs. Nixon, help me out real quick. Right. Let's, let's create the centerpiece. Okay. We started small scale, so we didn't start school-wide at first. We started with one grade level. Where on a regular, consistent basis, they were holding circles with each other as well as holding circles with kids. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Then we moved to the next grade level with that same approach, the same training, until we had all three grade levels trained, and it just kind of became an expectation for our school. Let's take a deep breath in and let it out for real time, for real, for real, for real. Take a deep breath in and let it out. One more time, one more time, take a deep breath in and let it out. What really made it work is that first group of teachers who saw a change in student behavior, change in student attendance, and so they were able to sell, promote what happened to their peers because they experienced what was so positive about it. How we got our students to buy into um, restorative justice practices was by making it a part of our culture. So every Monday we had a morning circle. Whether it was just a check-in for about five to 10 minutes, we used it as a proactive circle. How can you make this week the best week that you've ever had? And also kind of reflect on what didn't go well last week, again, to make those decisions differently this time. And then the kids started to say, we need a circle, right? If something was happening, you know, at home or in their community, um, it would be, you know, I understand that we have this to do, but can we just take five, 10 minutes to have a circle? Because we kind of need to get this off our chest. What's happening now? What, what are you noticing? What is the, the main problem at this point? So, I pay real close attention to this because this isn't just acting, this is like happening every day. I would say that don't go because you don't know what could happen. Like, if the police catch you, you fighting them, then you could, go to, you could get locked up. I was reluctant to use restorative justice because it seems every year somebody's coming up with a better mousetrap. It's gonna be hard in the beginning. When I used to introduce the talking piece, after about maybe a month, I had them stand when they had something to say. All around the room, let's go, let's go, let's go. At first, students were kind of shy. After about maybe, I'll say three weeks, they were used to standing up and talking and projecting their voices. Oh, I feel you, I got you, okay. You're gonna be my wonderful directress? About, I'll say about two weeks after that, science teacher came to me and said, what are you doing in restorative practices? Because we had students stand up and present their, you know, had presentations in front of the class, and none of them were scared to do it. You all did a super um, terrific job today. I'm really proud for you guys. Hands like this, hands like this, hands like this. Say, I love myself. I love, I love myself. myself. I'm very special. I'm very, very special. special. And you can't do a thing about it. You, you can't, can't do a do thing, a thing about, about it. He's a hair grease. Good job today, Mike. Good job. Good job. I've seen more students become more serious. We implemented something called off track excellence and motions. So during restorative practices, we will pick two or three students to say either a student is off track, they're showing excellence, or they're just going through emotions. What helped the students is when a student would critique another one, that student couldn't answer back. So if you're sitting in a circle and three of your peers say you're off track, and it's not the teacher or the administrator saying you're off track, sometimes you listen to that a little bit more when you see three of your students or you hear three of your peers saying that you're showing excellence, it builds you up. 
our students have communication-based disorders, we were a little apprehensive, not for the program, but how our students were going to receive and participate in the program. Why do you use a talking piece? What's, what's so important about the talking piece? So everyone isn't just speaking at the same time, like if Charles was speaking at the same time as me, and then neither or one of us would, he, no one would hear what we're saying. The talking piece was really, really important. Once they got the rules of the circle, and why we sit in the circle, because the circle doesn't have a beginning or an end. Everybody in the circle is equal, and everybody have equal say. Once the kids understood the ground rules, then it was able to just flow. I want to share with you all how um, it is awesome to see how you all share and how you actually use um, the talking piece uh, in class. Um, I heard words like respect, right? Um, taking turns, sharing, and sometimes that is not an easy process. In the autism class, the communication-based disorder class, the talking piece gave everybody the opportunity to talk. And even the, the students who have limited communication, once they realized that their voice would be heard, they wanted to talk more. Good job, everybody. Well done, well done, well done. Who's going to help us stand up and send a piece? The challenges with the restorative practices work is that you have to kind of be in a constant reflective state and, of course, having a growth mindset. When you think of self-awareness as a teacher, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? For me, the first thing that comes to my mind is holding up a mirror and then looking into it. That's the very first thing that comes to my mind. Being honest about your bias as well as your triggers. It means changing a lot of practices. It means being vulnerable. It means doing things differently than you've done in the past. And even for our adults, trusting the process is the biggest challenge. A lot of the, the feedback that I've received um, over the course of the school year um, I know for a fact has made me better, has made me a better educator, a better school leader. I want to thank the team and I also want to thank you both for letting us have this space because I feel like in the busyness of our jobs and trying to do everything right and check all the boxes, it's a space where, and again, I guess that's why I always tear up, it helps me connect my brain to my heart and the reason why we do what we do. So. Thank you for that. And for the kids, it's always easy to get the consequence and walk out the door and being suspended. But having to sit down and talk to someone, reflect about it, that forced communication about what happens is a lot for them. Anybody else want to offer gratitude? Sorry, I didn't want to make you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just definitely every person in, in this circle um, for being vulnerable, for being honest, for even in moments when we don't want to, still getting into the space of this is necessary, this is what needs to be done. And part of in that work is not just me saying, hey, I want you to train my teachers to do this work, that I, of course, had to be a part of that work and changing my mindset. Throughout this work really required me to be reflective about the things that I say, things that I do, and how I interact with kids and adults. So it pushed me into a different space of where I I probably was uncomfortable with going, but was probably necessary and it needed to happen in order for us to shift things in the building. So, when I first got here, this was the most challenging middle school in DCPS, had the highest suspension rate of every other middle school in the city. We are now, I would say, at the top where our, where the, the schools in the other part of town who don't have discipline issues, we rank up there with them as it relates to school climate and culture. Good job, everybody. The circle is officially closed. Good job. Good job. Well done. Well done.